the human security officer, part 24. She was looking down on him. And not only that but it was with the same air of confident superiority that that old bastard always had. Rah, he yelled rushing forward again. She's fast, but if I can get her in a grapple. His arms went wide for a tackle, but she was no longer in front of him. His momentum carried him past her as she sidestepped. Once again, before he could even process the action, a fist crashed into his jaw sending him careening sideways. A computer station caught him, breaking a fair bit under his weight but keeping him from falling to the ground. You, fucking, he righted himself. I'm getting tired of handing you advantages but here, last one. Her stance lowered as her hands came up. With palms open, she signaled for him try grappling her again. He mirrored her stance and stepped forward carefully. She stared at him with an intensity he found hard to hold. The two clashed like stags. Their arms tangled and legs pushed against the ground. He thought to overpower her, but she wouldn't budge. It wasn't even that she was reacting and matching him. It felt like he was struggling against a brick wall. He forced himself to lock eyes with her. There wasn't a hint of struggle or doubt in her. Are you starting to understand? She said through gritted teeth. There's no way. He made another move but got nowhere. You know my name, but do you know much else about me? She got her right arm underneath his left. He grabbed her shoulder but that was fine. I was the close quarters combat specialist for Cerberus. This is my bread and butter. Your ass wouldn't have even made GI and I'm going to enjoy teaching you why. Scylla looped her left arm up and over his right, locking it down. She then quickly positioned her left foot in and behind his right and slammed her right leg into the floor. With her right arm as a brace, his right arm locked down, and her left foot positioned perfectly, she forced him back and off balance. Without slowing, she redirected her momentum and pivoted on her left foot bringing him around and down. His back slammed into the ground forcing all the air from his lungs. She felt a rib crack under her forearm. Thoughts raced through his mind, but he couldn't speak. The back of his head throbbed where it had met the floor. He couldn't get his legs up underneath her. His right arm was still locked and because of her forearm he couldn't get his left arm in any useful position. He struggled to no avail. She simply held him in place. She stared at him, trying to lock eyes but he refused to meet her gaze. There it is. She chuckled and let up. She stood and looked around the room for something to bind his hands with. His eyes never left the ground. His attention was caught by a fair-sized shard of glass from the station he'd broken. Well, it seems like the only thing in here to bind you with might be your shirt. She waited for him. You fucking bitch. He was up and coming at her. Her left knee came up to intercept. The armor caught the glass shard, and she bought her foot back down. A swift right punch came down into the place in his chest her forearm had fractured. It wasn't likely to do much damage, but the pain would be excruciating. This time she didn't pull back. Her right hand came out of the punch and grabbed him by the hair. With that she wrenched his head down into a rising right knee. The strike was only made more brutal by the armor. Still, she didn't let up. The knee to the face transitioned directly into a front kick planted close enough to the fractured area to further the damage and send him backward into the glass wall. Snaking cracks formed from the point of impact. Arthur stumbled forward a step. Pain racked most of his body. It was hard to focus. Scylla closed the distance and turned her right side to her opponent. With nothing to say she looked him over for a moment. Her eyes fell on the sick totem on his belt. She brought her leg up and it snapped out kicking him not just back into but through the shattering glass. She watched as he impacted the ground 12 or so meters down. A thud and a roll left him lying face down in the dirt road. Penn took a moment to reholster her pistol and attach the wrist pieces for the hawk. 
then she walked back to the edge and stepped out onto open air. A second passed falling before she caught herself with a quick burst from the hawk and landed a few feet from Arthur. A half-conscious groan let her know he was still alive. In Earth gravity the fall would have almost certainly killed him but apparently not here. He barely managed to roll himself over before an aggressive hand grabbed him by the collar. Scylla was dragging him down the road to the center of town. Blurry vision still managed to note the broken husks of his combat frames. Combat what a joke. This wouldn't be happening if they'd given me REA. His muddled thought was interrupted as Scylla threw him against a stone creation of some kind. It was tall and sculpted by hand. An art piece perhaps to mark the center of the town, a place of congregation. And a congregation there was. They dared not stray too close but small crowds formed at the very fringes of the area. He watched Scylla notice the people. It gave her pause but her face remained grim and cold. He could barely move, not that he'd get very far. He watched as she slowly pulled the pistol from its holster with her right hand. She was holding something in her left, but the edges of his vision were blurry and his focus was on the gun less than a meter from his face. So straight was its aim that he could see down the barrel. His focus shifted to her face. Her eyes weren't intense or frenzied like they'd been when she fought. The look that replaced that one, however, didn't fill him with hope. Scylla looked him in the eye with a glacial cold. Penelope! She turned to see Gareth running out of the crowd. He stopped a few meters to her left. Don't. Given that the deal was till we got to Raxia, and that we are now on Raxia, I have no obligation to follow your orders. The pistol didn't move. Please, he could be useful. I'm sure he has information. Nothing a skilled tech couldn't get from his ship, I'm sure. You, then why did? Arthur managed to sputter. She looked back at him, still holding the gun steady. Simple. I wanted to break you before I killed you. Pen please. Gareth stepped closer. Pen threw the totem she'd picked up over to Gareth's feet. You're going to tell me he doesn't deserve it? He took the latest addition from the poor fucker who made contact with us. Gareth almost hurled. No less than fourteen ears, or other, were strung through a cord of some kind. It was sickening. Maybe, maybe he does, but you don't. Oh, trust me I'm not gonna lose sleep over this shit sack. Others? Sure. But not this one. Well... Then just for me? Could you just not, for me? She looked at him. Could you do that to me? Make me watch this? Look away. No. Her stare was terrifying, but he held his ground. He stared right back. Whether they could or not, his octopus-like eyes didn't blink once. She didn't say anything but after a moment she let out a heavy breath and lowered the weapon. Thank you. I don't want to hear it dash. Crack pop. Arthur's head snapped back as a bullet embedded itself into the stone behind him. The crowds of people disappeared almost instantly. Penelope was already in motion. The fact that she'd heard the shot meant she was still alive. She registered Arthur having been the target as she grabbed Gareth. There was nowhere to go but behind the stone obelisk. Arthur's face had a small hole in it. The back of his skull was missing its bottom half. Given how the shot had taken Arthur she had an estimate of the shooter's position. She hoped she was correct as she dove over the base and behind the stone structure. She landed on her back letting Gareth use her as cushion but quickly shifted to cover him. He could hear, even feel, a rapid rhythmic beating in her chest. Penn cursed herself. Alvarez would be screaming at her for being so careless. She did think it odd though that the shooter's first target was Arthur. There was no chance it was a missed shot that happened to still to hit another. The way she was exposed, the smart thing to do would have been hit Pen and then follow up with the incapacitated one. Arthur had little chance of crawling to safety in his condition. 
Stay here and stay down. As flat as you can and up against the stone. With that, she crawled along the wide base of the construction. Her mind raced, thinking of likely positions. A rooftop most likely. Towards the spaceport. No. Her subconscious spoke with Ash's voice. What? We know where they are. They were confident enough to go for a headshot which either meant they were very close or very good. Given the sound of the shot it isn't likely they're that close. Hun if I had my pick of positions where would I be? The top of the cliff. She peeked over the stone quickly and started to duck back down but stopped. Ash was right. The shooter was positioned at the edge of the cliff, but they were clearly standing now. It was far enough that Penelope couldn't make out details even with the setting sun at her back. She could make out that they were standing, however, with their rifle resting against their side. Slowly Penelope stood. She kept her eyes on the figure. It was almost silent after the loud crack of the shot. The figure seemed to be looking back at her. They held for a moment before messing with their wrist. Another loud boom signaled an explosion in the spaceport. The figure bowed slightly before turning to disappear beyond the lip of the cliff. A few moments later a small ship zipped up into the sky. It blinked away almost immediately, not waiting to break atmosphere before jumping. Silence returned. Penn stood still looking up at the cliff, 